So I'm Bob Ektafrishi. We are here at the IAU 29 General Assembly in Honolulu, Hawaii, an event which takes place every three years, and it's the world's largest astronomy conference. Usually it brings together about 3,000 scientists and astronomy communicators from across the world. So we are also here for the same reason. Yeah, yeah. It's for me. It's uh, one of the the best places to to meet people, the most interesting people in the world in in astronomy communication and astronomical science, both. Um, as a photographer, you have to travel a lot um, to find the best places to to take pictures. Now, uh, what do you feel? What is your feeling about uh, this need to travel so much for something that maybe? Uh, a thousand years ago, anyone could see anywhere. Well, unfortunately, as you're aware, today two thirds of human population are living under light pollution, under the night sky, which is uh, bright enough to hide the way, hides away the Milky Way. So, in that condition, we gradually get disconnected from this part of nature. And that's why I called night and sky part of nature, but forgotten in urban areas. And my imagery, as well as my colleagues in the world at night, is a way to reconnect modern societies with the night and sky, to reclaim back the natural night and sky to our uh, 21st century living style. And in order to do that, sometimes we need to travel far distances to places where still Night the sky is unspoiled and showing its uh, stunning natural beauty. Do you think that your art as a photographer will be destroyed as was the, the Van Gogh paintings with the time because of the light pollution or we are on time to, to protect these areas? I think there are um, a very small percentage of the planet Earth which is uh, not light polluted, but those percentage are now considered to be protected. So the, uh, the effort has already started a few decades ago, seriously, and during the last decade it's been considerably active uh, through various organizations like International Dark Sky Association, various dark sky programs, uh, dark sky parks, uh, the new announced dark sky sanctuaries for observatories and projects like the one you're doing to uh, map the world's light pollution and to monitor it using the space-based images. Astronauts are taking a lot of these images and they're useful to monitor the light pollution. So this is an amazing opportunity to not only uh, inform and make awareness, public awareness on the issue of light pollution, also to involve people to help. Uh, so my images are taken in the right time. There are still some natural dark sky available, and of course a growing number of cities and areas with uh, uh, very bad light pollution situation. But I think the public awareness in the next few decades uh, will help to preserve, preserve those last remaining natural dark skies. So it's not going to die. Well, I, we hope so. <laughs> mm. Also, the, the heritage no, is one of the, the, the main things that you are photographing and the relationship between the, the man and the sky. No? Um, do you think that um, how is is per, do you feel that is per se, is per se, is the people is conscient of this relationship actually, or we we need more awareness of this ancient relationship that maybe we have lost? Yeah, I think um, images speak for themselves in many ways, so that's why it's usually said that an image, uh, you know, worth a thousand words. Because um, when you show this merge of culture and night sky together in a single shot, it's so obvious that there is uh, no barrier between our ancient cultures and night sky and our modern view of night sky. So of course there are 
there has been steps and revolutions in our way of thinking, but they're all connected together. And these are illustrated by these images. Another way of connecting these together are, of course, by using uh, the landscape as part of our environment and night the sky as symbol of science. So this just preach art and science, nature and science together. So either a historic landmark could be um, our preach to our ancient culture or a historical natural landmark could be a bridge between art and science. As a professional astronomer, we are usually only worried about uh, the light pollution over 40 degrees. But uh, for a uh, um, for professional photographer, what is, are the, requir the, the requirements to, to get a, a good uh, nighttime um, picture in terms of the effectiveness of light pollution? Yes. Well, I think uh, there are two approaches. One, sometimes we go to places to document light pollution itself. So in that case, we are near a city or a major light source and we try to show the contrast of the completely spoiled sky at the horizon dominated by the city light dome and the natural sky above it. So this contrast is very breathtaking to, to viewers when they compare what is gone. And when you're inside that light dome at the, light dome at the horizon, you don't see any, any stars or just a few of them. When, when you're outside, you see the natural the sky only, you know, few uh, tens of kilometers away. So we have these, this approach of documenting light pollution itself or going to places where there is no light pollution to show the beauty of the natural the sky. And in that case, sometimes you need to be at least 200 or 300 kilometer away from a major city. And there are not so many of these locations. Some of the world's observatories, like in Chile, here in Hawaii and Mauna Kea, are in locations which uh, gives you the possibility of seeing night sky without uh, much hint of the light pollution. So the challenge uh, is sometimes getting close to light pollution to document it, and sometimes finding those last remaining spot to capture the night the sky as it is. But I think both of them are interesting to people. Like the images you're sharing from the astronaut on this project is also interesting to people not only to you know, record light pollution and uh, realize it, but also to realize uh, their areas at night from, from the space. So it's connecting very well with people. And I've seen this in my own pictures too, when I'm telling people that this is a light pollution, for example, from Texas, or from Rome, or from Madrid. And then um, they have a connection with the picture. And then they realize about the importance of night sky. And of course, uh, it's, it's a problem, light pollution is a problem, but it's also a way of communicating with these efforts that are, we're doing. Right. Mm. Thanks for your work for about our project. Um, something that uh, I feel because, for example, uh, these days I wanted to take some pictures of uh, Honolulu from from above, but it was difficult, even mm. forbidden in some places. Uh, do you think the 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 night escape is properly value? For, for as a tourism uh, resource, or um, is it the, the, the cities? Because I feel many times that uh, there are a lot of miradors that are only open during the day, but yes. not during the night. And, and I, when I see the pictures at night, I say, no, this is even more uh, beauty at the night, even if it's light pollution yes. in many places. No, but uh, how could how could we uh, promote this uh, night viewing opportunities? Yeah. 
Well, some some places are really made for this, so it's not that all places are closed at night. You go to some places where it's made to see the skyline at night. Uh, but there are many other areas which uh, are closed because of safety and security issues. Uh, well, we have this uh, habit or kind of ancient understanding that night is an uh, unsafe environment, so that's probably the reason. And people don't feel very safe at dark. That's also the main reason for light pollution, because they want to make night, uh, like day, <laughs> flooded by light. and. Uh, that's the main idea behind increasing light pollution, in fact. Other than decoration and other purposes of light, or some of the light which is necessary, a majority of it is coming from this mentality that night is too unsafe, or because we are not really nocturnal you know, species, and therefore it's probably normal to have this mentality unless you're an astronomer or an night escape photographer. Yeah, um, about security. No, it's, it's something that, that for me is very, very interesting for, for your work. No? Where you found the most risky situation over the world? During the day or during the night? Well, there were several occasions that was quite challenging. Um, it could be risky because of wild animals sometimes, like in Sahara in southern Algeria. We were in the desert, in Sahara Desert, at very wrong time. It was too late in the season, very hot, so night temperature was 35 degrees. And it was a paradise for snakes and scorpions. <laughs> so it was being at the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> uh, but of course the scenery was amazing, and it was my only opportunity to do that. But I need to deal with many running around snakes and scorpions at the same place. That was really tricky, I would say. Yeah, another one probably was in Dubai. You know, it's a big city, a lot of tourists. But uh, the uh, security is not used to see people with tripods in the middle of the city using um, a strange kind of photography <laughs> from their perspective, especially there are many places where high-ranked people are staying uh, in the residency near the beach and if you take uh, pictures from these dark spots it's very suspicious to police and in many other countries too. Uh, some countries are quite used to this, like in Scandinavia you never, you never get any problem doing this at night. People are used to it, it's very safe, low population, a lot of tourists, so it's very uh, normal. But some other countries, when locals uh, see you that, they report you to the police, and then police comes. So the first few minutes would be very aggressive. But then, usually it ends up with a classroom about the stargazing and astronomy and very friendly conversation. So that's the usual way of handling this. But it, unfortunately, it doesn't happen all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much, uh, and it's a pleasure to to Thank you. be in touch with you. Thank you. Thank you.